Spark Books here. Today, I'm going to explain the book, Influence is Your Superpower, by Zoe Chance. Take care, enjoy the book, and have a nice day. Influence is Your Superpower 2022 is a deep dive on influence, how it works, why it's important, and how you can wield it for ethical, positive results. It explores how influence operates by drawing on insights from cognitive science, linguistics, market research, and more, empowering readers to unlock their own natural powers of influence. Key idea number one, learn how people think to affect them. Understanding how people think helps you influence them. You may be thinking wrongly about thinking. Cognitive science, anyone. You boost your chances of success by appealing directly to the gator by making a pitch understandable, a call to action straightforward, and a decision easy. Before complicating things, discover your pizza emoji equivalent. Two mental processes exist. We'll call these modes something else instead of System 1 and System 2. Gator brain is System 1. 999 pound alligators exist. Gators have half tablespoon brains. Alligators conserve mental energy because their small brains power their huge, ravenous bodies. They use instinct and acquired reflex rather than complicated reasoning for daily tasks. Alligators mostly sunbathe and swim on autopilot. Threats and opportunities activate their cognitive abilities. Your brain is larger than a tablespoon. It's more like an alligator's brain than you believe. Gator mode conserves mental energy. When you chop onions, swim laps, or read a novel, you rely on instinct and reflex. Gator brain. Judge brain is system two. Your brain analyzes, compares, questions, and concentrates in judge mode. Judge brain will take over high level and unfamiliar activities. Catch. Most think the judge does most of the cognitive effort. We operate mostly in gator mode. Gator brain is your cognitive default. Your judge brain receives nothing without gator brain clearance. We commonly appeal to the judge while making a proposition, pitch, or request. Addressing the gator may yield better outcomes. Remember, the gator processes all cognitive input. Gator efficiency. Your gator brain is lazy. One company used sloth to great effect. Pizza Hut was the world's largest pizza delivery company in 2015. Domino's desired first place. Domino's launched anywhere. Make ordering pizza easy. They assumed they had clients' payment and address information. They proposed sending Domino's a pizza emoji through SMS or tweet. Finished. Send a pizza emoji for delivery. Domino's overtook Pizza Hut three years later when sales rose 10% in that quarter. You boost your chances of success by appealing directly to the gator by making a pitch understandable, a call to action straightforward, and a decision easy. Before complicating things, discover your pizza emoji equivalent. Key idea number two, ask. In Austin, Texas, MBA graduate Gia Jong ordered Olympic ring donuts at Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme no longer sells Olympic donuts. Gia stated Jackie, his server, had 15 minutes to make this custom dessert. Requests will get easier once you're comfortable speaking and hearing no. You may hear yes more than you think. Gia received 51 yeses to his outrageous requests after 100 days of rejection therapy. Good, but learning how to ask can improve your odds. We'll discuss pitching next. Jackie agreed. She informed Gia his order was free. How did Gia achieve this? He asked. Asking for what you want can work. However, most people are unwilling to try this. Why? Because our request may be granted or denied. No scares us. No hurts. Rejection scares. Gia entered Krispy Kreme for fear of rejection. Gia wanted to be an entrepreneur after getting her MBA. His initial venture capitalist pitch was rejected. Gia almost gave up his dream. He didn't want another no. He understood his rejection fear was holding him back. He acted. 100 days of rejection therapy resulted. Gia made a ridiculous request every day for 100 days, expecting a no. He thought more rejections would make rejection less scary. He was denied Costco's intercom announcement and Abercrombie and Fitch store modeling. Gia got some of her requests. Jackie at Krispy Kreme made that custom donut. He played soccer in their yard. Starbucks outlets don't have greeters, but his local Starbucks did. 
Effective influence requires accepting no. Dishes. Nope. Gia suggests harsh rejection therapy. Self-denial is also possible. 24-hour trial. Reject all unwanted requests. Don't say yes or suggest an alternative. Refuse politely. Attending a conference when overworked. No. Notice how you feel when rejecting people. Are you turning down the person who asked you? Does your no show disapproval? No forever. Never. Saying or hearing no isn't bad. Requests will get easier once you're comfortable speaking and hearing no. You may hear yes more than you think. Gia received 51 yeses to his outrageous requests after 100 days of rejection therapy. Good. But learning how to ask can improve your odds. We'll discuss pitching next. Key idea number three, pitch smarter. Timing matters when asking for a promotion, giving advice, or trying a fresh sales presentation. This airfare sale would have failed if launched on a sunny day. Tourism advertisements abound online. A Hong Kong-based Filipino airline agency's offline guerrilla marketing campaign illustrated how quick thought and creative timing can work. The team went out during a break in the rain on one of Hong Kong's wettest monsoon days. Waterproof spray stenciled the walkways. Their message appeared in vivid yellow letters after the following rain soaked the sidewalks. Philippines is sunny. QR codes linked to the airline's website. This message may have been insignificant on a nice day. During the worst day of the year, website flight sales rose 37%. Lesson. Pitch to a receptive audience. Selling travel. Do it when your audience is desperate to go. Requesting a raise. Ask her after a successful project, not between meetings. More pitching tips. First, remove any weak language from your proposal. I was just wondering, and would it be possible, undermine your pitch? Kind of, it seems, and more or less also apply. Avoid the pronoun I within reason. Constantly talking about yourself diverts attention from your pitch. I might be wrong, but highlights your fallibility. Is it possible that? maintains your pitch's boundaries in mind. First, ask big. It also evokes reciprocity. If your initial request is rejected, making a lesser second request appears to be a surrender. If you compromise with them, they'll be ready to compromise with you. Start a business with $20,000, $30,000. Why? Maybe. But also because your listener is more likely to grant your 20 of grand request if you previously requested 30. It uses relative size. $20,000 is huge. Compared to $30,000 or $40,000, it seems reasonable. Finally, the magic question, what would it take, works for huge asks. You desire part-time. Your boss is unsure. If you asked, why can't I go half-time? You'd likely get a number of reasons. What would it take to go part-time? Allow your manager to consider your suggestion. You may need to streamline operations, train a new hire, or set a weekly goal. What would it take? Invites problem solving and creativity. It's an impacting question that benefits everyone. Key idea number four, conceptualize. Quick, name three blue things. Finally, the strange frame. Simple, important, healthy, and practical things don't always bite our sluggish gator brain. Something mysterious, new, and exciting. The gator is listening. Asking a query or revealing a riddle will get you some bites. If you've ever hovered over a clickbait headline starting with you'll never believe, you know how immensely enticing the mystery frame can be. Be careful not to oversell mystery or underdeliver on substance catching attention is one thing. Losing trustworthiness is another. When in doubt, combine frames. Murray Kondo. The life-changing magic of tidying up has sold over 11 million copies. Its success may be due to its catchy three-frame title. Life-changing, magic, and tidying are monumental, mysterious, and manageable. House organization techniques would have sold less. C. Frame matters. Consider three white objects like milk, snow, and marshmallows. Who knows your blue thoughts? When asked to name three white items, you probably thought of milk, snow, and marshmallows. We swayed your response with examples. Let's examine a more serious example of how persuasive framing might persuade. Steve Jobs sought a CEO several years after founding Apple in his garage. Jobs solely considered John Scully. 
One issue, Scully was already CEO of PepsiCo, one of America's most successful firms. Scully rejected Jobs' offer. Why would he quit a top corporate job for a scrappy, unproven startup? Scully turned down Jobs. He eagerly joined Apple, Times. Jobs lasted. Jobs found the frame he needed. Scully asked, do you want to sell sugar water for the rest of your life? Want to change the world with me? Scully was satisfied. He had previously prioritized achievement and stability. Jobs rephrasing prompted Scully examine his work's importance. You can frame others' responses to a thought, proposition, or sales pitch. Some people automatically pick the correct frame for the right person at the right time. Don't worry if you're not. I'll demonstrate three essential frames. Massive. A monumental frame indicates something is monumentally thrilling, vital, and urgent. Monumental frames inspire. Manageable frames motivate. Frames make things manageable. People do what they can. Credit card debt can seem insurmountable, which discourages people from paying more than the minimum monthly payment. Australia's Commonwealth Bank studied debt management. Credit card users were given categorical statements and encouraged to pay off each category. They could pay off their amusement bills in a month, but not the total sum. This group paid off their debts 12% faster than the control group. Finally, the strange frame. Simple, important, healthy, and practical things don't always bite our sluggish gator brain. Something mysterious, new, and exciting. The gator is listening. Asking a query or revealing a riddle will get you some bites. If you've ever hovered over a clickbait headline starting with you'll never believe, you know how immensely enticing the mystery frame can be. Be careful not to oversell mystery or underdeliver on substance catching attention is one thing. Losing trustworthiness is another. When in doubt, combine frames. Murray Kondo. The life-changing magic of tidying up has sold over 11 million copies. Its success may be due to its catchy three-frame title. Life-changing, magic, and tidying are monumental, mysterious, and manageable. House organization techniques would have sold less. C. Frame matters. Key idea number five, expect resistance. Aikido, modern Japanese martial art. The goal is to defend yourself by redirecting your opponent's movement and preventing injury. You'll encounter opposition as you influence people. Resisting doesn't mean giving up. However, you don't need to forcefully counter-argue. Instead, like an Aikido master, appreciate and deflect opposition to reach a compromise. Beyond Meat CEO Ethan Brown is a market resistance Aikido master. Brown anticipated difficulty selling his plant-based meat alternative. It benefits the environment and human health. Brown had seen how various meat alternatives marketed as healthier and greener were popular with vegetarians and vegans but riled meat eaters. Meat eaters felt admonished rather than motivated to buy the goods when told their diet was harmful and irresponsible. Brown dropped that pitch. He expected many meat eaters to dislike giving up meat. Brown used Beyond to signify an improved product rather than abstinence, like the Meatless Mondays campaign. Brown predicted another major objection, taste. Brown convinced the public that plant-based meat replacements could taste as good as meat by making meatless pizzas and subs with fast food chains. Beyond Meat sold $98.5 million in 2019. You anticipate, deflect, and reinterpret objections like Brown. Simple tricks. Don't dismiss a listener's objections. Acknowledge and, if possible, articulate their opposition. Try you might believe I'm too young to step into a managerial role or I recognize that we're asking for a lot of money next time you encounter resistance. Words disarm. You also mute their inner critic, letting them focus on your offer. Ask permission first. Requests and offers flood us daily. The gator brain sometimes causes us to reject every new idea. Instead of asking, can I get a raise? Suggest, could we talk about my pay this week? Yes means they'll examine your request. If they say no, they just rule out discussing a wage raise this week. Affirm their choice when you propose. Use no pressure or feel free to say no. Whether you agree or not, your listener can decline. A frank request may make your audience feel pressured and resentful. You can avoid animosity by emphasizing that you don't wish to force them to agree. To view more content like this, subscribe. Don't forget to like and turn on notifications. The channel really benefits from it.
I appreciate you being here.